Hello, Akron fans! This is Shadow333 bringing you a match between Nail and the northwest corner of the map and Jay Raccoon in the southeast corner of the map. Jay Raccoon is playing Grekum and Nail has not decided, but he is probably going to be playing CISO. No, he's actually playing Grekum, how about that? So it's a Grekum Mirror on Cordova. This is a map that came out fairly recently, but has been updated extremely recently. It's been changed up to have more resources in the main and more resources in each expansion, but each expansion is very distant from the mains and from each other. So it's a lot easier to set up from your main. Expansion's a bit more of a decision, but expansion will still be necessary, of course, because your opponent can do it. But it also means that CISO won't be able to just expansion crawl, but Grekin will be able to build up in the main base. Vekir I'm not so sure about, but we'll figure that out soon enough. Anyhow, both players are playing Grekin, so that sort of species balance concerns won't be a problem right now. Jay Raccoon is building up his economy, setting up his Octos right now. Nail, this is at the 48 second mark. Nail is at the 26 second mark. He has set up his main Octos for the economy. Two from the Sepi, two from the Faro. Interesting. I've never really seen that much, but good idea though. Get him close to the RP destination points. And the Archgeist, of course, is going forward to tank, as Grekin players do. Same with Jay Raccoon. So Jay Raccoon, these are the Octos we saw right before I jumped. So Nail will be, like I said, setting up his RPs and then we will see what they do. Likely both players will be going for the standard Grekim building of a reef and then building of air units, though I'm not sure how much they're going to be saturating their main bases before they do that. I would recommend almost a complete saturation, at least one one RP on every box, not necessarily one RP in every particular, in every position it could go, but at least one per box, that'd be eight total in this case and six on the QP, because that is definitely a safe amount of resources to start out with. And it looks like Nail is getting more RPs, and both players are strapped for cash right now. They are definitely pushing it to the bleeding edge in the resources. Jay Raccoon's at 60 LC right now. Actually, he could be building up more. It looks like he's going for the early Octo to early Sepi and Faro. No, he's not. He's building a QPRP. That's the better idea. That was going to go for a very quick tech, which would have been a bad move right now. Actually, yeah, the 142 mark. Definitely wait another 30 seconds or so. And then Nail is... Got, he's gotten more RPs up, but he's gotten one more QP RP than LC RP. It's definitely much better early QP. And he is setting up his Faro, getting his Sepi, deprojecting his Sepi to turn to a Reef. So much faster that, than just building another Sepi and using it to build a Reef by, a, well, by 16 seconds, actually, because that's how long it takes to build a Sepi. And that is going to be a slight advantage for him, I think. Like I said, at this point, he's still got a lot of LC RPs. He's going to have to make this Octo an actual RP. I don't know if he realizes it hasn't become an RP successfully yet. And setting up his Sepi to Progen, so he has the full triad set up to Progen. Now, of course, reefs don't have to be used for tech immediately. It's just that when you do build a reef, if you're trying to go for quick tech, don't do it as quickly as possible. This is the this is a good time to do it. The 230 mark is a decent time to do it once you have your base saturated, though Jay Raccoon could easily get another three or four RPs in his main. You wouldn't have to worry about it so much. And from Nail's point of view, so Nail is definitely focusing on... Is he getting tech? He actually was getting tech back when he was in the future. Yes, he is. He's getting advanced structures very quickly. So the three-minute arc, he's going to be getting advanced structures, and Jay Raccoon, on the other hand, hasn't gotten his... See, this is the 206 mark is a minute prior. 245 mark is when he's building the reef in the first place, and that's... Yeah, that is when Nail has researched advanced structures. So Nail is definitely ahead on this. Jay Raccoon desperately needs to get more RPs. His only hope at this... His best hope at this point, not really only hope, it's not desperate yet, but his best hope at this point would be to get more RPs in his main base. Just set up his main base, get some more units, and then push out to an expansion. Get a couple units, get a Sepi and a Faro out to an expansion, and use that to build up. Faro is set up to patrol right now, so that will be helpful, but it's not strictly necessary at this point. It is not going to be a big deal. Obviously, a Faro pod is a big deal, but Nail isn't likely to push it out yet. Jericho actually wouldn't be hurt too much. Just, uh, okay, scouting would be kind of risky. I would throw out a Octo maybe to scout, but honestly, I'm not sure how effective it would be. There is an Octo coming in from Nail right now to scout, though. And J Raccoon... No, J Raccoon needs to scout. Sorry, I'm not... Watch that. Why am I being uncertain? Yes, J Raccoon needs to scout. Yes, it does cost 45 LC. Yes, it does take a little while to build and takes a while to go across the map. But it definitely needs to scout. You need that information. You need to know what your opponent is up to before they hit you because you may not have the meta time to respond to it when they do. And Nail actually looks like he is setting up... Yeah, he's setting a Sepi and a Faro to his expansion right now, so Nail is definitely going for that quick expansion, while well, Jay Raccoon, a bit more focused on his main base, getting advanced structures of his own. About a minute after Nail, and Nail, double-checking, has not really changed much with this game plan yet. He is getting an Octopod, he's getting a Faro Pot. 
Hmm, interesting. I wonder if he's going for legal class. It doesn't look like he has actually researched that yet, but he might have, or he might be planning to. Because if he's doing that, it would not surprise me. He could be going for Sepi Ligo and either go for a Sepi Ligo rush, just attack heavily with Sepi Ligos, or change to Gargantuans and steal all the crates, which would actually kind of bug me if he did, but... Well, that's something you do in the game, so that's a thing. That could happen. Nail, however, is definitely getting an Octopod and a Pharopod, as definite as any is an Akron, of course. That could be undone, but I don't think Nail is planning on doing it. j Raccoon could try, but... I think that's pretty consistent right now. It's pretty stable. I don't see how Nail would be undone on that, given his current position, given j Raccoon's current position. j Raccoon is able to stop the Octa from actually getting information, other than the fact that j Raccoon has been building a lot of spare Octos and Faros, and one Seppi. j Raccoon is not sending out the... Oh, actually, wait. He is not sending out the Faro and Seppi to another base. He's sending it out to Scout, so they will be scouting out Nail at the five-minute mark, rather late in. And Nail going at the three-minute mark... He's got far coming in, he's... Doesn't look like he's actually changing anything to be a delayed attack, so he's... Just checking this side of the map. Dato is coming in, though, and... Actually, you know what? I think, if I'm looking correctly, that Octo was going... Was it going towards the... No, it's the same path. So the Octo has not changed. So, I'm not sure what Nail is doing back there, but he did... Want to check the unplayable past edge, make sure nothing was... Too wrong. And no, it's not. Nail is a perfectly stable position, so Nail is nothing to worry about right now. J-Raccoon definitely has to worry about the fact that Nail is getting an expansion, and J-Raccoon does not have the economy to match right now. Though he does have a slight economic advantage in his main base. Nail had not saturated his main base as much as J-Raccoon did, so J-Raccoon can capitalize on this for another minute or so. But after that, definitely not going to work out, and J-Raccoon does not seem to be keen on capitalizing on it right now. Just jump forward to the 622 mark. J-Raccoon is building up a semi-pod. Good idea to do. And he is sending out his scouting forces, attack forces, well, raiding forces at this point. It's more than a scouting force. Full out raiding. While Nail, I don't think he's going to be in his main base when this actually hits. So, I don't know what the threat is. I mean, that Faropod, Nail is back here at the 457 mark. And that Faropod has now left. It's left fort. It's going towards the attack. And there's no Sepipod coming in right now for J Raccoon. So, J Raccoon's... Gonna have to build up some Seppies in order to deal with this. He doesn't have a Spire coming up yet. He has the resources to build up Seppies, though. And he's getting very quick weaponry. That's interesting. I imagine he's going for very quick either Chrono Bomb or very quick Plasma Cruise Missile. Probably Chrono Bomb, given the amount of resources he has. Plasma Cruise Missile would not be affordable right now. Octopods also are actually going towards... Oh, going towards the Southwest Expansion. While Nail has started to build up the Middle West Expansion, getting a 3 LC and 2 RP... Sorry, two QPRPs, which pretty much eliminates J Raccoon's economic advantage that he had running for most of this game. Nail also has a second reef, which means he's going to be hard to attack, and a dome. But the dome is not in a great position to defend until J Raccoon starts to actually attack the triad, and even then, there there is an angle where they could be attacked quite healthily. The important part is these two LCRPs. Those can be those can be attacked without retaliation from that dome, which will be a bit of an issue. Looks like J Raccoon. Jumping up to the 748 mark, where the raiding forces have pretty much come in. The Octos are attacking, they're on the move. Looks like they're going to be going towards the Arcticus, but they might actually see... No, they're not going to see the RPs first. No, they are! j has actually changed the order, so they will be attacking that RP first. And that RP, like I said, is out of the range of the dome, so there's no automated defenses for Nail to use to get in the way of that. So this attack is going to be very damaging, assuming it goes through. And there is an Octo that's going to be coming up to help defending us that... No, that's the Octo that's there to build the RPs. Jumping back two minutes to the 602 mark when the forces were just being sent out and the Faropod is actually being sent to J Raccoon's base. Faropod will be able to attack without really any retaliation itself. The Autopods are being built up. The Sepipod is being built up though. Actually, there is going to be retaliation. That Sepipod is going to be a big deal. Once the Sepipod gets up, and it will in time, that Sepipod will save J Raccoon. So it looks like Nail definitely not in a great, in a great spot, but J Raccoon does have to spend some Chrono Energy to actually deal with this. And he hasn't yet, but that, that Faropod is coming in closer and closer to the Sepipod. Eventually, the Sepipod is going to see it and start just going for it. A dome is well coming up from an Octo, and the Faropod has not been set up to attack. So this dome will be able to just get rid of that Faropod. And... What the? A... Oh, sorry. <laughs> My mistake. Nail is setting up a dome. That dome won't be attacking the Faropod at all. I can't believe I missed the team colors on that one. I, I derped. I'm sorry. That was... That's Nail's dome. That's much more dramatic, but it's also much more useless. 
because there's better defensive forces than the Firepod. It's actually as though the Firepod wasn't attacking it, I had no reason to. But the Sepipod is going to chase away the Firepod, Nail is not going to bother staying with this. But J Raccoon is just letting his Faros die. Oh, good. The last Faro managed to get rid of the dome in time, but for some reason the Faros are moving away. Bad ordering timing, but it happens. Regardless, J Raccoon did successfully defend his base, and his raiding forces are coming in. They were at damage, though, in the meantime, from this Firepod attack. That will be problematic. The Firepod is scouting out the Middle East expansion to see if J Raccoon has actually attacked it. I mean, expanded to it. He has not. The Middle West expansion is the only one that's actually been capitalized on. Though the Southwest expansion does have some Octos in it yet, and J Raccoon looks like he's going to be... He's definitely got his eye on it. He wants to expand there. He's going to have a hard time doing so. That's a difficult expansion to defend. It was meant to be very lucrative, but hard to defend, unlike the Northeast expansion, which is a lot less lucrative, but certainly much easier to defend with only the choke points here, up here, and down here. And this choke point's almost useless to run through, so pretty much the North north choke point. Anyhow, Farpod is coming back for Nail, and has decided to decloak as well. The autos are going to be attacking. This is now... The attack is now permanently consistent. This will definitely be going through, and that RP, like I said, going down, but Nail doesn't have an economic advantage. She has a fairly large economic advantage, and the Faro... The Faro and Seppi are going to be able to just take care of the raiding force. I think this, this RP has not gone down. It's 34 health left. Just barely survived, and that will be a failed raid by J Raccoon. A nice attempt, though, but unfortunately didn't quite work. He didn't have enough units to get in, and his units were damaged. Primarily, his units were damaged by that one attack. However, I don't know if one RP really getting killed like that. At this point, Nail has enough of an advantage. He can just get away with it. He has a thousand... Is, oh, sorry. At that point, he had a thousand LC in the bank. He's getting Chrono porting. Still, he has 500 LC in the bank. He isn't really building much yet, which is a bit bizarre, but he isn't building much yet, and he's mainly focusing on this expansion. Really, he doesn't have a lot to worry about. So economy-wise, Jericoon is not going to be helped out by harassing. Best thing he can do right now is to try to get an expansion of his own, which he is doing, and really defend it well so that Nail can do anything about it. J Raccoon, double-checking that raid, sees that it does fail. Can't really do much about it, though. This is the unplayable past. So Nail and J Raccoon are definitely focused. 957 mark. Nail getting his expansion set up. Continue to set up his expansion. He's building... Actually, he's going to be going for the Southwest expansion as well. I'm not sure if he's aware that there... Yes, he is definitely aware that there is an expansion there. He knows there's an expansion down there, and his triad has been destroyed by J Raccoon's forces. So J Raccoon has, at least to some extent, defended that expansion. Obviously, it hasn't had a full-scale attack yet. Nail is pushing towards the unplayable pass, and is likely to actually start sending a full-scale attack. There we go. The Farpod... No, full-scale attack towards the main base. The Farpod is definitely attacking the main base. Two Sepipods will be here to defend, and that Farpod won't be able to go far. Should really be attacking the Southwest base. The forces that were coming in that were attacking the Southwest base before aren't, and the Farpod has retreated as well. Definitely the best idea. So right now, Leo class is being researched. There we go. That's what I was waiting for. So the Octopod and, Sep and Farpod will be able to start building Sepi Legos, and that will be very difficult for J Raccoon to deal with. He doesn't have a lot of anti-air right now. He has Sepi Pods, which are helpful, but he doesn't have any Sepi Legos. He doesn't have any... Sorry, well, Sepi Legos of his own would help somewhat. But he doesn't have any Sepis. The Sepis are the big one, and Octo Legos would help as well, but Sepis are the big one. He also has Chrono Porting, though, so both players now have Chrono Porting. We're going to be probably seeing some really nice Chrono Porting shenanigans. Nail is in the best position to do this. However, Jericho has more QP. He doesn't have as many units to use it with, but he has more QP nonetheless. And the Octopod will be able to deal with the Octo. Nail is... Doesn't look like he's actually in a great position. Just double check. No, at some point, double check, and I would know there'd be an alert that says the Chrono Port has occurred. But he is definitely in a good position to build up Sepi Legos. There we are. There's the Sepi Legos. I was looking for those. 11 minute mark. We have three Sepi Legos coming up. And J Raccoon is going to be in a bit of a tight spot. His expansion here is going to be only defended by its own resources. Not going to be defended by the main base. That's how the whole map was designed. You can't really defend expansions from other bases. But this is going to be a bit of an issue for him if he doesn't, learn, if he doesn't use that knowledge is advantage. Really, he could attack this base. I mean, use the knowledge, attack this base, or just make sure to remember, defend this base. Defend this base with its own devices. Don't rely on the main. The main is defended as well as it's going to be, although really he could help defend it more. And like I said, they both have Chrono Porting. These Sepi Legos are likely to be jumping back anytime soon. And J Raccoon is... He hasn't really... Is he building up at all? He's got a lot of resources in the bank, but he's not really building up. So... Apart from his expansion here, he's getting he's definitely getting a dome. He's getting it. That was likely a command mistake. That RP is probably meant to be a dome. Same with this RP. I'm not sure why the RP was just built in the middle. Like I said, I'm, I'm sure why he meant to build a dome, I'm sure. 
Hmm, bizarre. Apparently Nails having some issues commanding a safe he goes. But his safety leaders will likely be chronoporting once that issue is resolved. I'm not sure what's going on there. Ah, there we go. Yes, there we go. So the Sepi Legos are on the move towards the Southwest expansion. Jay Raccoon is going to be in a tight spot to actually defend against this. And that is... There we go. Chronoport. That's the Chronoport. Or wait. I wonder if the Chronoport's happened. I, I nailed in follow it, so I don't think I can follow it yet. But there will be a Chronoport soon. Well, there has been a Chronoport. Nailed jump back to spot it. And yes, there it is. The Sepi Lego has Chronoported back. Unfortunately, it didn't get the orders queued properly, so Nail's going to have to redo that Chronoport. And I think it's a bit too close to the Unplayable Past. He can't actually redo it unless he just finds a way to undo all that. No, he has two orders left. That won't be able to do it. So the Sepi Legos will be there in the past. They certainly will exist, but they won't be able to actually do any damage right now, which is slightly unfortunate, because that would have been a great time to actually attack. So unfortunately, Nail didn't quite queue it out properly, and... Oh yeah, he tried to use the Articus Q. New no. Articus orders do not queue. Dispatches don't queue. Regardless, the Zeppelin Legos will be able to attack and deal some damage eventually. But that actually kind of undermined himself because Nail now, since that's, that that Zeppelin Chrono Port happened, J Reckon's in a much better position to build up his defenses. Now I think Nail's a bit on the back foot. He's got a bunch of LC, but he doesn't have a lot of production going on. And J Raccoon really just needs to start getting some tech up, getting legal class of his own, and just pushing, getting another expansion even just. Pushing out a bunch of units, possibly Chrono Point to defend, but really getting this expansion well saturated, building it up, and then using that, those resources to get more units, like he is right now actually, it looks like he's going for exactly that, getting a bunch of units, use those, take another expansion. Just get yourself an economic advantage, because right now, Nail has been in the back foot. He is definitely going for another Chrono Port, but it is going to be one Seppi Pod, and that's about it. So the Seppi Pod is going to be. Qs don't work for the Articus. And anyway, so the Seppi Pod is going to be attacking. It is going to be dealing some damage though. The Seppi Pod, sub, the Seppi Pod has done something, but I don't think it'll be. Able, I don't know if we'll be able to kill that Seppi in time. It's hard to say. J Raccoon is definitely aware of this attack, but he is also attacking Chronoport Farbots of his own. There we go. Chronoports from J Raccoon. Harassing against that base. So the main base of Nail is getting heavily attacked by Chronopores from J Raccoons. So these Farpods. Valiant soldiers, these Farpods. Oh, actually, no, no, they're going to bad spots. So I think those Sepi. No, the Sepi Legos won't be able to kill them in time, but they were able to deal a fair amount of damage to them. So one of them is going to go down fairly quickly. Sepi Legos are still coming in, and I imagine Nail is going to be doing another Chronoport off this. He is fast forwarding right now, but I imagine a Chronoport will be likely coming once he attacks the main base. Jump in there, Chronoport. This is going to be Paradox Country in a hurry, guys. Just want to warn you right now, this is going to be Paradox Country, I'm sure of it. These Seppi Legos are likely to Chronoport anytime soon. They don't cost a whole lot to Chronoport, but, well, at least compared to what exists right now, but Nail is going to be in a tricky spot. Seppi Pod Progen, huh? So J Raccoon, I'm not sure if that was a mistake or if he actually is intending to build some legal class units in the middle of Nail's base. I highly doubt this, but... Apparently he's decided to progen a Seppi Pod. Rather odd place to do this. Seppi Legos are coming in and... You know what? Nail isn't going for a Chronoport. Interesting. I'm a bit surprised because you'd think he'd go for the Chronoport, especially given that his main base is under attack. He at least Chronoport the Seppi Pods back. Send them back. Deal with the Faro Pods. Nail is definitely aware of these Faro Pods. But he hasn't... No! There we go. Okay, I was, I was trying to figure out where the Chronoport was going to happen. So the Chronoport is happening, attacking this base. And this is before the Faro Pods... Yeah, this is the Seppi Pods that were coming out. And these are the Faro Pods that are coming out. The far pods coming out that are attacking Nail's base right now. These, well, this semi pod and the far pods that were here before, they are getting killed right now in as they're being produced in J Raccoon's base. So this is going to start paradoxing out very quickly. So the red time wave back here is going to be threatening J Raccoon's far pods with these semi legos. While this attack here, it doesn't seem to be actually threatening anything from Nail. So Nail is going to be in a fairly stable position right now. While J Raccoon is going to be losing that attack. Although J Raccoon is actually chrono bombing the entire main base. Not enough to get rid of the Sepi Legos, but still chrono bombing the entire main base. Which should slow down Nail a bit, but the Nail, Nail wasn't really product, wasn't doing much in the way of production. So I'm not sure what use it'll be. However, a Plasma Cruise Missile is well coming in, which isn't going to do much. That was a bit of a waste. J Raccoon really should undo that. The Plasma Cruise Missile there had no effect. The Chrono Bomb already pushed away all the forces. But he is going to be attacking 
with the far... What? No, right, the red time wave here. This is the red time wave that will be making the Faropods cease to exist or never have existed in the first place. So I'm going to find out what the world has been like if the Faropods have never been born. They, I guess they've been given... Yeah, <laughs> there we go. So the Faropods are here, but they were never born. So they've been given a special gift. Let's find out what the world has been like had they never been born. Although, given that this isn't a cheesy 50s movie, I don't see how that's going to have a happy ending. Seppi Ligos are definitely going to be destroying this base of j Raccoon. The j Raccoon's expansion attempts have been thwarted and his main base is almost completely exhausted. So, like I said, he really he had the initiative, but he did not take advantage of it, which is rather unfortunate. Nail right now is getting back in the upper hand. His base has definitely Chrono Border back in. He hasn't been under heavy attack right now. His main focus should be this expansion. It definitely has been for Nail. Nail's been focusing on Jay Raccoon's expansion, and his own and Nail's own expansion has been slightly becoming his new center production, actually, or at least main resources. Like I said, though, he really should be focusing on... Sorry. Jay Raccoon should really be focusing on, well, I guess at this point, either defending or just getting... Like this red time wave is destroying everything. It, it's destroyed this base. Jay Raccoon's entire expansion attempts have been thwarted. The best thing you can do with these RPs right now is move them to these boxes over here, these two boxes that are there just for the moving of RPs primarily. Seppi Pods coming in to try to help out. J Raccoon Chrono Pointing back some Seppi Pods, but they won't be able to do any good. The Seppi Legos coming in with the Chrono Clones will just, just tear apart everything. So these Seppi Pods are doing no good. The Seppi Pods over here are alive, but they aren't able to do much. I think they actually got permacloned. I'm gonna be frank, I think these guys got accidentally permacloned which is how they're able to stay alive despite having never been born, but frankly, that's not going to be enough. Bits Bros. Jericho isn't actually attacking with them, but honestly, it makes no difference. These Seppi Ligos, more Seppi Ligos coming in from Nail, so that will easily finish off Jericho's base. Jericho's expansion has been destroyed. His main base is almost completely exhausted. There isn't really much for him to do at this point other than, well, I guess other than get Legal Class and try desperately to make his own Seppi Ligos build up from there. Honestly, I think the best thing you could do right now is grab specials, get a Far Ligo, freeze bomb the Seppi Ligos, and then also get Seppi Ligos to kill them off, or get Octo Ligos or something. Well, no, Octo Ligos is too slow. But Far Ligos would help with freeze bomb if he got specials. Specials would have had to have been gotten a while ago for Chrono Porting to help, but if he, if he got specials right here at the 1936 mark, right near the Unplayable Past, then by the time he got the Far Ligo out, he'd be able to go back, Chrono Port back, and use specials, use the freeze on the Seppi Ligos getting rid of the Seppi Ligos, actually freezing the main base even. Because that would completely shut down Nail's pro oh, almost completely shut down Nail's production. Obviously he has the secondary base in the Middle West, but he doesn't have the same level of production there. He's not, not as much going on. He has three Seppi Ligos here, which would be very juicy targets. It would allow Jay Raccoon to get back in the game. As it stands, Jay Raccoon is in a bad position, and it doesn't look like it's going to be any, any better. He is going for... Oh, you know what? He's going for Far Ligos, that's for sure. No specials, though. I'm not sure if he's where he needs specials to get the freeze bomb. Not a lot of people use it, so it's not particularly common knowledge. Like I said, he is getting. A, he has a lot of RPs that aren't doing much, and the Faro from Nail is scouting out the expansion, so Nail is aware of what's going on, and. Yeah, Sepulchre is coming in as well. Don't Beam is being upgraded, which is gonna hit one of the Sepulchre Legos. Should help a little bit, but not enough. There's really not too much damage that'd be actually happening to it. So the Seppi Ligos are being Chrono Ported back to help out, and no, well, there's just continuity because obviously you don't want to propagate that before it comes up, but... And in case you're wondering, no, the players cannot see my line in the timeline, so whenever I move around, they don't actually see it. So if I jump back to check what's going on, they won't see what's happening, so I'm not going to give away whether or not a Chrono Port has happened at the unplayable past, because they'll never see my player... They'll never see my player line, they'll never know. So don't worry about that, it's nothing inconsistent. It's not going to affect the game at all. Anyway, back to the game itself. Nail has... His main base is actually a bit more secure right now. His, obviously his LCRPs have been killed on this side. Not much use, but... His secondary base has been built up, and he has a lot in the bank. j Raccoon is far less in the bank. He has enough to get a few units. They get a small army going, but... Or a strike force of legal class units, or a small army of base class. And here we go, getting specials. I think he's aware of what's going on now, and... What? The? Okay, was that a Chrono Bomb or a Plasma Cruise Missile? That oh, was a Chrono Bomb. Okay, so the main base is being Chrono Bombed again, but Jericho does not want to give that away. 
and neither will we because it'll jump over to make this continuity. So J Raccoon is going to be attacking with Sebulegas of his own, of course sending the Chrono Bomb in to get rid of any defenses. Really probably should be sending the Chrono Bomb here to get rid of all of these RPs or at least stop that production for a little while. Nail does have the resources in the bank but it could still help. And a Chrono Board has occurred as well. The Sebulegas are being Chrono Board back, attacking the Arcticus from the back and if well, there's anything Nail is commenting about undoing hierarchies, this is probably going to do it at the very least. So the Arcticus is being destroyed in the Unplayable Past, so Nail will not have that as an option for him in the Unplayable Past. Once that blue Tidewind comes along, that will be damaging to Nail's command structure, but he really doesn't have enough to get rid of it. And Nail is going for a Chronoport of his own. Looks like he is... Let's see, where is he Chronoporting units? It looked like he was Chronoporting them from his... Now, it looks like he was actually corner pointing to attack that expansion back here, which I'm not sure what he'd be doing that for, but he did have a unit here, and it did corner port back, so, yeah. That's... I'm not sure why he corner ported that far pod back. There's really not much reason to do so. It's not going to move much faster. Anyway, Far League is coming in from J Raccoon, and the Articus has been destroyed, like I said, in the Unplayable Pass, so J Raccoon's actually... He's put himself in a really great position. He's managed to recapture the momentum. And of course he has specials now, so he could freeze if he wants to. At this point, I'd say just push it. Really, the best thing Jerry can do right now is push his advantage. He definitely has an advantage, and he's chronoported back those far Legos into the unplayable past to help damage even more. The green time wave is carrying them along. Those far Legos are going to I think if anything's gonna win the game for him. Oh, I see, the far pile of course, is an uppercut attack. But really, there's not much point. Specials has been researched. It was not being researched at that reef. It was being researched at the reef inside the base. So this far pod will be able to deal some damage, sure. But most of the damage is to buildings that are completely useless and to reefs that weren't being used for anything other than healing. So Nail doesn't really have much to go for. And Jericoon's... Wow, I'm surprised. I'm quite amazed. Jericoon has actually managed to get the momentum back to him. As far Legos are in the main base and actually managed to destroy the Lego class or the pod class tribe building Legos. That being said, Nail is not dead yet. Nail does have a triad... He's building a pod class triad in his expansion. He's got the odd pod coming in to help the Sepipod, and the Sepiligos are definitely there to help build up. So, this isn't over yet. And of course, here's the Chrono Bomb base. So, of course, it wasn't dead. It's just Nail had managed to... Well, sorry. Derek had managed to Chrono Bomb the base before everything went away, which is really smart of him. Nice use of the timing. However, he needs to go back and start getting these Far Legos in and attacking and actually destroying the base, finishing off Nail's main base. While Nail attacks with Sebi Legos and Sebi Pods, which are likely to be Chrono Port back anytime soon. So, like I said, this is Chrono Porting territory, and this is where it gets really interesting. Anyhow, so these Sebi Legos and Sebi Pods will likely be Chrono Port back inside the main base to help deal with this. Probably try to get rid of the Pod Class Triad. While J Raccoon. When he's focused, is definitely attacking the main base. <laughs> Both players are scared of each other. Interesting. Okay, that's an interesting place to be. So apparently it's fairly evenly matched if both players are frightened of each other. And it would appear that a Chrono Bomb has actually been launched by Nail as well. Yeah, so Nail has apparently launched a Chrono Bomb of his own. And yes, there it is. The Chrono Bomb of his own has attacked. Will be pushing for these RPs, but like I said, Jericoon hasn't actually migrated the RPs at all. So, not really doing too much at this point. Far Legal coming in, and I think that's actually the Far Legal. One of the Far Legals that attacked, is it? I don't think it is. I think the Far Legals. No, they're over here. They're definitely safe for when they came in. But the Far Legos. Like, the Pod Class Triad here is heavily threatened. J Raccoon really doesn't have a whole lot going for him right now. He's got. He's got the Pod Class Triad, he's got the Base Class Triad, but he doesn't have a lot of LC. He didn't capitalize on the expansion, and the momentum is now swinging back in Nail's favor. Because Nail does have a ton of money in the bank. And this is why I said before that Jericho should have gotten an expansion here earlier on when he had the momentum from stopping that first Sepulego attack in the Southwest expansion. Because that would have been the point where he'd been able to get another expansion, defend it well, and just push the momentum. But as it stands, unfortunately he wasn't able to get rid of that Sepulego in time, or the Podclass Triad in time. So right now Jericho is at the 27-27 mark. Getting rid of the Spire, getting rid of the Dome, at least trying to get rid of what he can. I'm a bit surprised he's not freezing everything up, though, with this one far... Like, freeze with one of the Far Legos. Recover with the Far Bud, actually. There it is. And then just finish off with the other Far Lego. Doesn't make a huge difference, but it's still something if there's another attack coming in, if the Sebi Legos come back, or a Chrono Port occurs. At least it's a bit more causally consistent. But Nail has definitely Chrono Ported back. And, like I expected, 
The Seppi Legos have Chronoporter back to deal with the Faro Legos before they come up, and I think those are actually the Faro Legos that were going to become part of this attack group, but I'm not certain. I'm I'm quite doubtful of that. I actually am fairly certain those are causally consistent. I think they're actually off the timeline. But we will find out fairly soon, because it looks like looks like the Faro Legos are still here. The blue time wave will be the one carrying along no, the green time wave will carry along here. The green time wave is gonna be carrying along the changes and Actually, you know what? Yeah, it looks like the Faro Legos here... No, they were causally consistent enough. They they are still alive. The Green Time Wave will not kill them. But this attack will definitely destroy j -Raccoon. At this point, all he really has is the units he currently had constructed. They are Faro Legos. He could, with, like I said, the right abilities, definitely destroy them. Destroy j Raccoon's base. Sorry, let me reverse that. j Raccoon easily destroy Nail's base right now with... Clever use of Freeze, and clever use of Chronoports, and clever use of the Faro Legos and other units he has. But I'm not sure if he's quite in the mood to do that, or knows the best way of doing that. Anyway, I don't know if he is quite aware of the best way of, to make use of those units. So I'm honestly kind of doubtful. I think J Raccoon may have lost this thing. Nail managed to come back a bit. I mean, admittedly, it was quite back and forth, which is interesting. It's just that J Raccoon really did have the momentum. I feel like it was back and forth only because the players did kind of mess up a little bit at various points, at crucial points. There was these clutch points where a Chronoport occurred that just stopped another attack from occurring, or stopped another attack from really dealing the damage it could have. So, Nail definitely focusing on that Chronoport. And J Raccoon, I think, yeah, J Raccoon is GG. He has surrendered, but still, very well done. And, yeah, J Raccoon is fairly new, and that was well done. So, still, that was, like I said, J-Raccoon really pushed Nail. Nail pushed J-Raccoon. Both players pushed each other. As you see, all, so all tech for each player definitely means they are pushing each other. They actually decided it was worth getting the tech. So, yeah, that is this new Cordova. I guess that worked pretty well. It's interesting. I have played it myself a bit. It is quite fun. It's a bit more fun than the old paradigm of Acron map development. So, there will be more maps like this. There actually have been more maps like this already. And that is... So yeah, that's the game. And that was well done. So nicely done to J Raccoon for just really pushing Nail like that. Taking advantage of the main base. Like I said, there was more that could have been done with this expansion. More that could have been done when he had the expansion to continue pushing the momentum. But that was it. So thank you for watching, everyone, and have a good night. And once again, I'd like to thank all my subscribers for subscribing and showing interest in the game. And if you want to play, like, there's the IRC channel. If you have the game, you can just go into multiplayer and it'll automatically connect you. Just talk to people, ask for a game. You'll find a game that way. Or just hash Akron at irc.coldfront.net. So, yeah, thank you once again all for subscribing and have a good night, everyone.